In this tutorial, we'll get started with Transistor Bass. First, let's check a short demo. Oh yeah, that's a TB-303 style emulation. That is a monophonic baseline synthesizer with integrated step sequencer. So let's have a close look at the features that we've added to this classic workhorse. First, the main interface. Up here on the right, these switches allow you to show and hide the main panels. The other main interface control is the show step sequencer switch. We'll look at the step sequencer in detail in a moment. There are some themes under this menu. Choose between black, blue, dark blue, and acid. Indeed. Program sequences and patches. One of the main concepts is how patches, or sounds, and sequences are linked. These are combined into a program. Each program consists of a sequence, as we just heard, and a patch. This is the sound used by the sequence. Transistor Bass has 128 sequences, 0 to 127, and 128 patches, also 0 to 127. Sequences and patches can be combined in any way to make up 128 programs. Why 128? The 128 programs are linked to the 128 notes on the MIDI keyboard. For example, here's programs C5, D5, and F5. Of course, you might not want a sequence, so switch off the sequencer, and then you can play transistor bass like any plug-in instrument. Let's change the patch. Now, notice here, this LED has lit. This is the shared patch indicator. It means the patch is used by at least one other program. It's just a notice that if you mess with this patch, it will affect another program. The sequencer. First, let's click here to open it. Notice that as we play different notes, or programs, the sequence changes. But what if you want to transpose a sequence to another pitch? You can do that with MIDI channel 13 as shown on the note color picker. Okay, fine, but what note is unity or original pitch? For that, see the transpose control. It shows how many semitones the sequence is transposed from zero, the original pitch. If I deselect the sequencer, you can see that it corresponds to a note of C5, that's MIDI note 60. As I move the transpose note, the transpose indicator changes too. Cool. And of course, if you can do it from the piano roll, you can do it from any MIDI controller that allows you to send note information on separate MIDI channels. Let's review some of the other controls. Notice that we can change the steps in the sequencer from the default 16. Beats per minute, or BPM, is usually locked to FL Studio, but you can use the internal BPM switch to set it independently. For example, I'll choose a half tempo of 64 BPM. Great. Last along the top, we have the shuffle control. This is the same as swing on FL Studio's step sequencer. Now 
next gate slide and accent controls. Here's the default sequence of 16th notes playing on C5. I'll deselect these gates so we get one note per beat. So we have four active gates to extend a note at a slide step under the triggering gate. Then the note will play to the next gate. If you want to trigger the note on this step, you'll need to select the gate on the previous step to stop the previous slide. So for every slide, you need to add a new gate where you want it to stop. Slide notes also slide when they coincide with a pitch change. Accents momentarily increase cutoff resonance and volume. The accent control determines how much accent you get. And the octave control allows you to change the octave of all notes. Piano roll control. Deselecting the sequencer gives normal piano roll control over transistor bass. To get the portamento effect, overlap notes. Just extend the tail of the leading note into the one that follows. To accent notes, use a velocity equal to or greater than 86%, which is a MIDI velocity of 100. There's also control over per note filter resonance and filter cutoff values. So cutoff. And resonance. And of course, you can use the regular slide and portamento notes. Let's slide up an octave. Patch editing and synthesis. Starting with the read write buttons. If you change anything on the patch, the write button will light. So clicking it will permanently write the changes to the selected patch. For example, If I now select read, I can return to the original patch. I'll just switch off the step sequencer and auto follow so we don't inadvertently edit the wrong patch. I'll open an empty patch slot and I'll turn up the filter cutoff and resonance down so we can hear the oscillator. First up, one important and not so obvious signal flow fact. The main volume control feeds into the distortion unit. This allows you to drive the input to the distortion harder, but it also means the volume on the distortion unit is then the final output volume. When distortion is off, then the main volume behaves as expected. Transistor bass, like its hardware inspiration, is a dual oscillator monophonic architecture. You can blend between the two waveforms here. Filter cutoff and resonance, of course, are key to the sound of the plugin. The envelope modulation is a simple attack decay envelope. with decay adjusted by the decay knob. Accent momentarily increases the filter cutoff, resonance and wave volume. It's triggered by the step sequencer or piano roll notes as we saw earlier. Tweaks. These controls influence the oscillator. 
from the high pass filter that controls the bassiness through to the VCA smoothing that removes attack clicks from notes. I'd recommend tweaking around and referencing the manual for details on these. Then we have a delay. And a reverb. To round out the overall sound. I hope you're now up to speed. And with that, I'll leave you to enjoy Transistor Bass. Hit me in the face with a new transistor bass. Hit me in the face with the new transistor bass.